YouTube family, hello and welcome to another practice with me, Kat Methan. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm not in my studio today, I'm in sunny Portugal filming for you. So hopefully the outside world stays pretty calm. It's a bit windy. I think my sock is about to get blown into shot, <laughs> but we'll just let that all slide. And we're just gonna be working our way through a beautiful vinyasa today, um, keeping it kind of playful, strong, but knowing that there are always options to take as many modifications as you wish to. So we'll get started just down either on your knees or in a cross leg position. Either way, whatever is more comfortable for you, you could sit on a bolster or on a block if you want to. So just closing down the eyes, placing the hands in the lap, wherever they land, that might be palms down, it might be palms facing upwards. Just trying not to overthink anything in this practice today, just seeing if you can just be present with what is, not what you feel like you should be doing. Just moment by moment, just feeling into what needs to be. So right here, right now, as we arrive in our practice together, we just settle upon the breath, noticing the rise and fall of the chest, of the belly. Maybe there's even a rise and fall of the shoulders. Noticing the quality of the breath without judgment, without the need to fix, force or change anything. And we'll set a group intention today for this practice to show up as you are, to come as you are with your own intuition, with your own experience, knowing that whatever I guide you through will be different from person to person. You can modify, you can shift, you can embellish, you can take variations on any of the asanas that I offer you, making this your own. And we're just going to arrive with a little bit of fire with Kapalabhati. If you would like to, you can take your arms up to the sky as we do this one round. So fingertips spread, thumbs facing inwards. If that feels a little bit too intense, you just bring your hands down to your lap. We will do 60 pumps here and then we will retain the breath, bring the thumbs together, and then on the exhale, we will slowly float the hands all the way down. If you don't take the arms up, it doesn't matter. You can always bring them up right at the end. So let's just take a nice releasing breath, inhaling through the nose. Exhaling, let it go. And we start here together. Inhale, bring the thumbs together, retain. Exhale as you slowly open the arms all the way out and down to the side. Rolling back the shoulders. Making your way over into an all fours position. Tucking under the toes and just shift yourself back almost to kind of like a modified child's pose, reaching the arms out long. I'm gonna take an inhale, round the spine forwards, drop the hips down, bend the knees. So you're kind of in like a weird variation of a cobra slash upward facing dog. And then we exhale, take it all the way back. Inhale forwards again, round, drop the hips, bend the elbows. And then exhale, take it back. Doesn't matter how far you drop down. One more like that as you inhale, wave it forwards. 
and then exhale as you take it back. Either doing two more exactly the same, or this time as you inhale, come forwards, you'll come through Chaturanga. And then exhale, take it back. Last one, however it needs to be, inhale. And then exhale, taking it back. Slowly peeling the body all the way up to a kneeling position, keeping those toes tucked under. You can just edge them a little bit closer together. Let's take a moment here of meditation, but with this toe stretch, so this physical trigger happening in the body as we really try to calm the mind. So maybe you just focus on the breath, the gentle inhale, exhale. Maybe you focus on a mantra whatever feels right for you, just for a few more moments here in silence together. Gently placing those hands down, untucking the toes and just taking a little wiggle of those toes. And then tucking the toes back under again, lift the bottom, come to take a forward fold at the back of your mat. Let's take a nice inhale, lift through the chest here. Exhale as we fold. Two more like that, super gently inhale as you lift and lengthen. Exhale as you fold. Softening through the knees as you inhale, come all the way up to standing, head and neck come last. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up to the sky. Step the left foot behind you on the diagonal. Take hold of the left wrist with the right hand. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, take a little side bend over to your right. Keeping the arms reaching up, come through center, just release the hands. You're going to pick up that left foot and then place the left ankle on top of the right knee. Slo so softly, <laughs> softly bending down here, hinging at the hips, hinging at the knee. Reach the arms out to the side, feeling into the balance here. And also that beautiful yummy opening through the glutes, through the IT band. Starting to straighten that supporting leg, crossing the left foot now in front of the right foot. Take an inhale, reach the arms up again, and then exhale as you fold forwards. If you need to bend through the knees here, absolutely. One more breath. And then taking an inhale, coming halfway. Maybe you take your hands to the hips. Maybe you reach the arms all the way out long in front of you. An extra breath, take an inhale. Exhale here. And then inhale all the way up to the sky. Release that left foot and just come to ground down at the back of the mat. We're then going to take the right foot behind the left. Reach the arms all the way up. Take hold of the right wrist with the left hand. Take an inhale, lengthen. Exhale, side bend over. Breathing here. And 
and then bring those arms all the way up through center again lifting that right knee and then placing the right ankle onto the left knee right knee goes out to the side and then as you hinge at the hips bend the knees reach the arms out feeling into all of those beautiful tiny little wobbles that happen here whilst breathing into the outside of that right leg And then starting to straighten that supporting leg, grounding that right foot down now across the left foot in front on the diagonal. Reach the arms up, inhale. Exhale, square the hips, forward fold. Two more breaths here. And then we'll take an inhale, halfway lift. Maybe the hands come to the hips. Maybe those arms reach all the way out ahead. Extra breath, breathing in. Exhale. And then we breathe in, reach all the way up and then unravel those legs. Take the hips as wide as the mat and just start to bring the hips into some hip circles here. If it feels a little bit weird, embrace the weirdness. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, embrace that uncomfortableness. Going in both directions, you can get as deep, as low as you want to in these hip circles. Just really allowing yourself to breathe into some fluidity here, something that I work a lot with in practices, something that I love to bring in. It is this water-like ebb and flow energy. And then slowly bring those hip circles, bring that wiggling all the way down to a fold. Start to walk the hands forwards, making your way to a downward facing dog. And we'll spend five breaths here in our downward facing dog, just breathing into whatever needs to happen. That could be stillness. It could be a pedaling through the feet. It could be a shake, a nod of the head. But like I said at the start, we make this our own. Allowing your inner guide to be your teacher as much as me today. Three more breaths. And then starting to walk those feet all the way up to the hands. Peeling the body all the way up to standing and then rolling the shoulders back. We're going to move through three Nirasuranamskar A, three Suranamskar B. Apparently I can't talk today. And we're just going to feel into any variations, any modifications that you want to. If you want to modify every single Chaturanga down to the knees, please do. Just because you could do Chaturanga doesn't mean you need to. If you want to add handstands in between your, drop, your jump backs, please do. As always, make this your own. Finding Tadasana another though and just arriving here together in unity knowing that we are connected by this weird and wonderful world of the internet, knowing that there is probably somebody else around the world right now doing the same practice as you, standing in this same spot as you, but in a completely different country, completely different time zone. But we are connected by this beautiful practice through community, through movement, through breath. And allow the knowing of that the smile of that to guide you on your way today. Take an inhale, sweep the arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale as we soften through the knees, take a fold. Inhale, create space. Exhale, place the hands, either step or jump back, lowering down either through Chaturanga or down to the knees, lifting the chest, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Taking again a few breaths here. So knowing as well that my pace is more fluid, more dynamic. If you need to go slower, honor that slowness. We'll always have a couple of breaths here in a downward facing dog. And you can meet here at any point. Two more breaths, strong and solid through those foundations, grounding through three feet, through hands, and then pushing through the shoulders. On your next inhale, step or jump the feet to the hands, lift the chest, create space. Exhale, we fold. 
Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale those hands down through heart center. Two more Surya Namaskar. A, inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, we fold. Inhale, create space. Exhale, place the hands, step or float back, lowering down through Chaturanga or down to the knees. Inhaling, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. On this downward facing dog, maybe lifting up the right leg, bending through that right knee and taking some hip circles here. Three going in each direction. And then placing that right leg down, we sweep left leg up and do the same on the left side. And then placing that left foot down, take a breath here, inhale. Let it go. On your next inhale, step or float the feet to the hands, lift the chest, create space. Exhale, we fold. Inhale through the arms all the way up to the sky, gaze high. Exhale, hands down through heart center. Last Surya Namaskar, A, inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, we flow it down. Inhale, create space. Exhale, place the hands, step or float back, lowering down through Chaturanga or down to the knees, inhaling upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's just draw a little bit more energy into these shoulders, the option to come down to dolphin. And just hold this dolphin, walk the feet in as far as you can. So lifting the hips as far up over the shoulders as you can, rising up onto the toes. For another three breaths here, if dolphin is not feeling like it's your friend today, stay in your downward facing dog or maybe even come down to the knees or take a child's pose. Pushing yourself all the way back to that three leg, that, sorry, not three leg, that downward facing dog. And then on our next inhale, step or float, feet to the hands, lift the chest, create space. Exhale, we fold. Inhale, take the arms high up to the sky. Exhale, those hands down through heart center. Hinge at the hips, bend the knees. Let's find Utkatasana as we arrive in our first Surya B. And let's take an extra juicy little breath here together. <laughs> Lengthening out through the whole body here. Taking a nice big inhale again. And then exhale, we fold. Inhale, find that space again. Exhale, place the hands, step or float back, lowering down through Chaturanga or down to the knees, inhaling upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step the right foot through between the hands. Let's take a high lunge rather than warrior one. So flipping that back heel up, a couple of extra breaths here. If you want to draw yourself into a little bit of extra power today, you're going to bend that back leg and hover that back leg. And we're just going to hold here for another breath. Inhale. Exhale, place the hands, step it back and flow your way through meeting back in that downward facing dog. We flow onto the left side now, left foot steps forwards. We sweep the arms up, finding that high lunge, and then maybe hovering that back knee down for our extra breaths. On your next exhale, framing that left foot, step it back and flow your way through, meeting back in that downward facing dog, beautiful. And let's just hold here five still breaths, finding the meditative side of breathing whilst in our asana. Allowing that ujjayi breath to flow through you, if that's what you practice with. If not, just breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Three more breaths. Mm 
And then on your next inhale, step or float the feet to the hands, lift the chest, create space. Exhale, we fold. Inhale, hinge at the hips, bend the knees, sweep the arms up, Utkatasana, holding here. We're going to add in just a little bit of a march here. So we're going to inhale and then bring the right knee into the chest, reach the arms back. Exhale, drop it back down, Utkatasana. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, drop it down. Inhale, up to the right. Exhale, down. Inhale, up to the left exhale drop it down holding take a breath in and then exhale folding forwards inhale create space exhale place the hand step or float back lowering down through chaturanga or down to the knees inhaling upward facing dog or cobra exhale downward facing dog Inhale, right foot steps through between the hands. Again, the option to take an extra breath with that back knee down. Reaching those arms all the way up to the sky. We'll hold for five, four, three, two, one. Float those hands back down. Step it all the way back and flow your way through, taking any modifications or variations that you wish to. We take our next inhale, stepping left foot through between the hands, reaching the arms up, maybe hovering that back knee down again. And we hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly planting hands down, step it back through plank and wave your way through, meeting back in that downward facing dog let's take a releasing breath here together inhale and exhale <sighs> just breathing gently but deeply here One more breath, breathing in and breathing out. On your next inhale, step or float the feet to the hands, lift the chest, create space. Exhale, we fold. Inhale, hinge at the hips, bend the knees, sweep the arms all the way up to the sky. This time, we're going to march again, but this time we're going to add a little twist in. So we're going to lift up with the right knee, twist over to the right. Exhale, drop it back down. Inhale to the left exhale inhale to the right exhale inhale to the left exhale and hold so personally for me i don't love lifting my head up in ukatasana even though traditionally that is the cue so entirely up to you as to whether or not you keep your el your ears by your arms or whether or not you lift the head. So just feel into what feels right. Take an inhale here. Exhale, we fold. Inhale, create space. Exhale, place the hands, step or float back, lowering down through chaturanga or down to the knees. Inhaling upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right side steps forward. Same again, options, high lunge. Or you could hover that back knee down, not just off of the mat, for five, four, three, two, one. Take a breath in. Exhale, frame the foot, step it back and flow your way through. Meeting back in that downward facing dog. On the next inhale, we step left foot through between the hands, reach the arms up, find where you want to be here. And we hold for five, four, three, two, one, take an inhale, exhale, frame the foot, step it all the way back and flow your way all the way through, meeting back in that downward facing dog. And then this time again, option to drop the elbows down to dolphin. This time in dolphin, we're going to take a couple of nose taps for anybody wanting to go there. So you lift the head and then we're tapping the nose down somewhere between the thumb and the elbow. And you're gonna go for five, 
four, three, two, and one. Holding your dolphin now, either taking a pause and dropping the knees down, or you're going to go for five more of those. So we go for five, four, three, two, and one, reaching all the way up dolphin, and then push it straight up to your downward facing dog. Amazing, well done. Feeling those triceps, take an inhale, exhale here. And on your next inhale, step or float feet to the hands, lift the chest, create space, exhale as you fold. Inhale, Udkatasana. Holding here, interlace the hands, push the hands all the way out, drop belly down towards the thighs, Ardha Utkatasana. Holding, taking an inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Breathing in, breathing out. Take one more inhale here. Exhale, place the hands down. Bakasana Crow Pose. Option to hold for five breaths and then take a jump back and flow your way through a vinyasa or just play around with variations, lifting some toes up, seeing how it feels. You could hop yourself onto two blocks. You could just have a little play around, put a cushion in front of you. Don't be afraid to try it. Even if you don't take flight today, it does not matter. So two more breaths and then taking that jump back if you have it in your practice. Making our way through the vinyasa all the way back. Finding that downward facing dog. Now you're going to sweep the right leg up to the sky on an inhale. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Inhale up to the sky. Exhale, right knee to left elbow. Inhale up to the sky, exhale right knee to the nose, and then hover that right knee down just above the mat. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Pull it back into the nose, take a breath. Exhale, place that right foot down. Take an inhale, find a high lunge. And then exhale, bring the hands to heart center here. Breathe in, find that length. Exhale, you're going to twist towards the right. And then eventually, as you lean forward, you'll hook that left elbow over the right knee. Option to take a bind, but I would recommend today not taking the bind because we're going to be traveling forwards in a moment. From here, though, you're going to see how it would feel to lower the back knee down, hover, and then lengthen it. Four more times. Lower it down and lengthen. Three, four, and five. Amazing. Staying in the, this twist, you're going to gaze forwards, and then you're going to step that back foot to meet the right foot, staying in the twist. Option just to open up the arms here, gaze to the sky, or to take your Parsva Bakasana, so your side crow. Any variation that you want to. Explore here. You could be on both elbows like I've done there, or you could just take the front leg over the elbow and then just hug that back knee in and finding that variation. Wherever you are, you've got two more breaths, and then we're going to come back to that twisted Utkatasana. And we're stepping the left foot all the way back again. So left foot goes all the way back. This time, maybe you want to open up and take a bind here, gazing up towards the sky. Now, a little bit of a challenge here, dropping the back knee down if you're in the bind, even more of a challenge, and then seeing if you can s s uh, sit back towards a bound variation of Ardha Chandrasana. Not Ardha Chandrasana, Ardha Hanumanasana. Really wobbly one, but it's a fun one to try. And obviously, if you are not in the bind, you can just stay in the variation of this with a really lovely twist. 
bending through that right knee, lifting up off that back knee again, releasing yourself from the bind. Inhale, lengthen, high lunge. And then you're going to push yourself all the way forward to stand on that right leg, catching the left knee with the right hand. Left arm is behind you. Maybe you take hold of this left foot with the right hand, lengthening through that left leg, breathing here, finding your balance, finding your stability. Reaching that back hand, so that left hand, reaching it up to the sky. And then you're going to bend the left knee in, come back to one of these positions that we started with. So the left ankle on top of the right knee, reach your arms all the way out to the side. Holding here. I know that right leg is firing up. It's working pretty hard now. One more option here for a little arm balance. Either stay here and just breathe into this balance or placing the hands down. You're going to hook that left foot around the top of the right arm. And then the knee comes onto the back of the left arm, leaning forwards, leaning forwards, leaning forwards. Maybe finding your balance, lengthening that leg all the way out to see how that feels. <laughs> If you fell out of it or if you're sweaty and you're sliding out of it like I am, just embrace the sweat, embracing that playfulness. And then we're all going to come back to ground into that right foot, keeping the left ankle on the right knee. And then we're going to come up to standing, take that left leg all the way back, find warrior three. Holding your warrior three, either with the hands at the heart center or more of a challenge would be arms by the ears. Holding here for five breaths. Two more breaths. And then placing the hands down, taking a big step back and follow your way through any variation of that vinyasa that you would like to. Taking it back to a downward facing dog. Amazing. Maybe you take a breath here. Maybe you drop the knees down. Just honoring what it is that you need coming as you are in this moment, thinking less about what your practice needs to look like and more about how you want it to feel. We're gonna take an inhale as we sweep the left leg up to the sky. Exhale, left knee to left elbow. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, left knee to right elbow. Inhale, we take it up. Exhale, knee to nose. And then hover that knee off the mat, holding for five, four, three, Two, one, inhale, knee to nose, stepping that left foot through, reach the arms up, finding that high lunge. I'm going to bring the hands to the heart space and we're going to take that twist again. So breathe in and lengthen. Exhale as you twist around to the left and it's the right elbow that then comes down to hook over the left knee. So not taking the bind this time, settling here, finding the balance first. And then we're going to bend the back knee and straighten for four, for three, two, and one. Amazing. Gazing forwards, push off that back leg, step forwards into an Utkatasana, but we're staying in our twist. Option to open the arms out, gaze to the sky. Option to place both hands down and take paths for Bukhasana. So finding a side crow variation. Taking a few breaths there, having a play around, slipping on a sliding if you're a little bit sweaty like me. Two more breaths, and then we'll all come back to finding that twist here. Grounding into the left foot, picking up the right leg, and we step it all the way back. 
option to take a bind. So from this bind, remember, we're going to drop that back knee down and shuffle back to a half split, Ardha Hanumanasana. Now, you may fall out, it may not work, it may be a funky kind of pretzel. If you need to unravel your bind and place a hand down and reach an arm up, then absolutely, that is a variation. That's an option there for you. And then we're all shift forwards again. Lift that back knee off, unravel, reach the arms up, coming out of your twist, gazing forwards, pushing up to the, to standing on that left leg, left hand catches the right knee, right arm reaches back. And of course, you can take the left hand to the outside of that right foot, lengthening that leg, finding that sweet spot of balance. Holding here. And then taking that gaze to the front, reaching the right arm up to the sky, gliding that right ankle onto the left knee. And we hinge ourselves down to that same place that we started, noticing maybe if there's any difference now, maybe feeling a little bit more open. <laughs> maybe feeling a little bit more tired. Holding here, option to reach the arms out. And of course, the same option to place the hands down. Hook the left foot, I'll show it to you from the front angle this time. Hooking that right foot, sorry, around the left arm. And then you wanna get the knee up as high as you can on the right arm, go forward, forward, forwards. As always with any of our arm balances, your gaze is a huge part of a successful arm balance, gliding yourself forwards and not having that fear of face planting. So when you're done having a play around with that, just coming back to that variation. And we'll take one more breath here together, inhale. Exhale, take that right leg all the way back. Warrior three, let's hold for five steady and strong breaths. Two more breaths. And then gently hands come down. We step it all the way back and we take our flow through Chaturanga. Or you could just go straight back to a downward facing dog. You could skip out those little flows now if you wish. Here now is the opportunity to take either a pause, a moment of beautiful reflection and contemplation just down on the knees, getting some air to the face. Or you could come down and play around with your pinch Mayurasana. So that's your forearm stand. If you're not overly confident in your forearm stand, then why push it? Why not just sit back today and take a moment to be? Those of you that would like to come into your forearm stand, making your way to dolphin, and maybe today you just take three tiny little hops to see how far you get so that we don't go too far on that first one. Another four to five breaths just to play around with your pinch Mayurasana. If you've already taken it and you're down already, taking a child's pose. Those of you in that kneeling contemplation and reflection, if you too would like to go down to a child's pose, please do. If you'd like to stay seated, closing down the eyes and breathing here. If you're still inverted, starting to make your way down now and just choosing where you'd like to be, whether that's in child's or whether or not that is kneeling. And we're just gonna take three breaths here together. We'll be inhaling for four and exhaling for eight, in through the nose and out through the nose. So we inhale one, two, three, four. Exhale one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And just let your breath come back to its natural rhythm. We're going to slowly start to make our way back into a downward facing dog. Placing the hands down, tucking under the toes, flying the bottom all the way up to the sky. I'm going to inhale, sweep that right leg all the way up. And then you're going to exhale, draw the right knee across to the left elbow. And then you're going to place that right foot to the outside of the left hand. Come onto the inside or the flat of the back foot and then reach the left arm off, fall in triangle. If you would like to here, we're going to lift this right leg. I'm going to lift it five times for five, four, three, two, one. Left hand comes down. We pivot all the way around. Find wild thing or floating wild thing. So floating wild thing, that back foot doesn't go down. Another option is you can take your right hand and place it down behind you, taking hold of the ankle in your floating wild thing. It's pretty tricky. Holding here. Then we can plant that foot down, take a breath, lift the hips, lift the heart in your wild thing. Exhale, drop the bottom down, keeping that right knee bent in. Inhale, lengthen, left arm up to the sky. Exhale, finding a twist. Marachasana C, peeling yourself around. Two more breaths here, keeping that left leg active and engaged. And then we'll slowly pivot all the way around. So your hands are going to come back down to where they were as if you were going to go back to plank, but we're not going back to plank. We're going to place the hands down, pivot up onto that left foot. Right knee is going to come in for active pigeon. So right knee comes to where the right wrist is, but your leg can be much more on a diagonal for active pigeon than it would be for a full pigeon. You could place your hands to blocks if you wish, or you can reach your arms all the way up to the sky. Holding here. Another breath, feeling that inner line of energy. The adductors have to work pretty hard here. Hands come down and then we draw the back knee. So that left knee comes behind the right and then we sit back onto the bottom. So half Gomakasana or quarter Gomakasana whatever you want to call it, taking an inhale, lengthening through the chest and then exhale as you fold here over both legs. Closing down the eyes. Just having a few nice deep long breaths here. On an inhale, lifting the chest all the way up. Now you're going to keep this left leg roughly where it is. You may want to peel it out a little bit. And you're either going to bring your right hand around your right foot and just open that right, right leg out to the side, or you're going to see how it feels to come into compass. So you're going to take your left hand to the outside of the right foot. Right hand feeds through between the arm, between the leg, and you peel the butt cheek off the ground and then gaze underneath that left arm holding here. Ooh. 
Wherever you are, two more breaths. And then slowly releasing. Very gracefully, you are going to make your way back and take yourself through a vinyasa. So however you need to get there, stepping it back through plank, maybe you just go straight to your downward facing dog. That is absolutely fine. And let's just take a moment of pause in this downward facing dog together before we go to the second side. And when you're ready, let's sweep that left leg up, breathing in. Exhale, left knee comes around to the right elbow. And then we plant that left foot down. We pivot onto the knife edge or the flat of the back foot and then reach all the way up and over with that right arm. Option here, you could take the arm up, shift the hips back, and we go for five, four, three, two, one. Amazing. Right hand comes down, and we pivot all the way around through wild thing, either full wild thing with that foot down or a hovered wild thing with the toe off, and you could play around with reaching back with that left hand. Pretty intense, this one, so just see how that feels. And then opening it up with that foot down, taking one more breath. And then exhale, drop the bottom down and we take our Marichasana C, left hand behind, inhale, right arm reaches up. Exhale, reaching behind, gazing behind that right leg. Stay strong and steady here, nice long breaths. Mm. Two more breaths here. And then slowly unraveling, placing both of those hands down at the top of the mat again. Remember, we're coming round into our active pigeon. So it's the left knee coming down next to the left wrist. Option to stay here and be supported or to reach your arms all the way up to the sky. Like I said before, really finding that inner line of energy, drawing up through the pelvis, Mula Bandha, very much active and engaged here, keeping you lifted. And then gently placing those hands down. You're gonna glide that back knee in behind the front leg as you come to sit back and we find shoelace slash gomokasana. Taking a breath here as you lengthen the spine and then exhale, folding down. And you can take that gaze inwards here, just fold and breathe. Having these moments just to pause staying connected to the breath, but finding these slower moments as a time just to reflect and come back to the intention, just to come as you are and to flow in a way that it's going to serve you. One more breath. And then we lift the chest all the way up, that option of compass again. So you could take hold of the left hand with the left foot and just open out in this way, which is really, really lovely. Or you're gonna take right hand to the outside of the left foot. Left arm comes through between. We peel the butt cheek off, gazing underneath that right arm, holding here. Finding that flow of breath, even in these more deeply intense stretch places. And slowly unraveling, 
Remember, very gracefully, you'll make your way through to your plank position. Maybe you just take it straight back to a downward facing dog. Maybe you come down through Chaturanga, inhaling upward facing dog or Cobra, exhaling downward facing dog. And we're gonna make our way down to seated. We're gonna jump our way through if you can. So gliding those legs through and then plopping the bottom down. You're gonna place the feet about hip distance apart. Hands are gonna come facing inwards behind you. One of my favorite little strength drills, this one. So we're gonna inhale, lift the hips up to reverse tabletop. And then as we exhale, we're gonna glide the hips through, keeping the hips off, okay? We're gonna go for 10. And if you need to take pause in between, doesn't matter. You just gotta do what you gotta do. Take an inhale and lift. Exhale. Inhale for two, exhale. Inhale for three, exhale. Inhale for four, exhale. Inhale for five, exhale. Inhale for six, exhale. Inhale for seven, Exhale, inhale for eight, exhale, inhale for nine, exhale, last time, inhale for 10, and then exhale, release yourself down. And you can just give the wrists a little bit of a shake out. We're gonna come into Paschimottanasana, just a lovely long forward fold now. Taking a nice breath in, lengthen, and then exhale, fold. Can you allow that hinge to come from the hips first? If you wanna round the spine slightly, do. But can you start this movement with the hips, 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 hinging forwards, finding that place first? And then if your spine is desperately asking for a nice juicy rounding, then you can gift your spine with that love. Breathing here, closing down the eyes. And just while you're here in this uh, forward fold, for those of you that don't know, if you love this practice, you can keep practicing with me online via the Soul Sanctuary. I will talk more about it at the end. But trust me when I say it is the app or platform that you need in your life when it comes to yoga, mindfulness, meditation, breath work, philosophy, all of that good stuff. I won't ramble, but I just thought now would be a nice time to tell you. <laughs> Let's take another breath in, undulate with the spine, exhale as you release forwards. One more breath here. And we lift all the way up. You're going to bring yourself towards the front of the mat and then glide yourself all the way down onto your spine. A couple of options here. So your options are to take three variations of back bends. So you could come up into your half bridge, you could take full wheel, you could take forearm wheel if that's something that's in your practice. If you would like just to chill, you could take a block underneath your sacrum and just reach the legs up to the sky, or you could take a block underneath and take a supported bridge, okay? It's entirely up to you. You could come to an early Shavasana. Remember, this is your practice, you get to decide. So those of you taking your three backbend variations, five breaths in each one, and if you need to take a moment between each one, just shift the knees side to side, but without coming into any forward folds or any big counter poses, we'll do that together. And just taking it in your stride, challenging yourself if you want to, or just peeling back into a more easeful end to the practice if you wish to.
You're taking your back bend variations, moving towards your final one now. Those of you in a more restorative place, just honoring that place and just allowing yourself to be present there with your breath, with your body. Okay, we're all going to move into a supine twist together. So making your way down to your back if you're not already, reaching your arms out into cactus or T-shape, and then you're going to take your knees over to the left side. Your head is going over to the right. Any option to take a little hook of the knees or you can just keep those knees together. A lot of people have quite a personal preference when it comes to supine twists, so I'm not super strict here or ever <laughs> as to where you need to be. Just finding a variation of a supine twist that really works for you, the one that you feel drawn to. And when you get there, just take some time to be really present with the way the breath expands through the body and the way that we create space here. And then gently unraveling, coming back through center and taking it over to the other side again, any variation with the legs that you feel called to do. Breathing deep through the side body. Three more breaths here. We gently unravel ourselves together. Hug the knees into the chest. Take a little rock side to side. Knowing that this final asana, the most important one of them all, when we practice yoga at home, there is such a tendency to run off the mat before the practice ends. So today, say to yourself, I commit to seeing this practice through. I commit to my Shavasana. Allowing yourself just to drop into your Shavasana, grabbing anything you might need, bolster, a blanket, and really just embracing the rest and the reflection that can happen here. We'll take two big releasing breaths together. Inhale. And again, breathing in. And let it go. your energy washing over you, lighting you up from the inside, feeling that glow, feeling that sense of aliveness. And taking time in these moments to pause and to be grateful, grateful to your body, to yourself, to your mind, and to those people around you and this beautiful little hub, this online community.
the invitation as always to stay in your Shavasana for as long as you wish to. If you feel ready to start moving away, you can bring some very gentle feeling back into the fingers, the toes, wiggling them, circling ankles and wrists. And then whenever you're ready, you'll just roll over to one side into that fetal position, keeping the eyes closed and just pausing into that stillness, that beautiful place of rebirth. A new chapter begins after every single yoga practice. So just allow yourself moments there. And when you feel ready, pushing your way up to a comfortable seated position. Keeping those eyes closed. Placing one hand on top of the other over the heart center. And we'll seal our practice with an om, three shanties, and an om. I invite you to join me taking an inhale here. Shanti, shanti. Shanti. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me on your mat. Thank you. For those of you that haven't heard of the Soul Sanctuary, I'm going to give you a little chat about it because honestly, I really honestly don't think you'll regret it. Um, the Soul Sanctuary is an app. It's a website. It's a platform. You can do it on desktop. You can do it on your uh, laptop, on your TV. You can stream it to your TV through your, um, through your what's it called, screen mirroring, your uh Chromecast, all of those fancy things. And you can watch it on your iPad. You can download videos for when you're offline. There are over 700 videos, not just from me, but some amazing guest teachers as well. It costs $14.99 a month. Or if you sign up for the annual membership, it works out at being about £11.50 a month. Um, and you get a 14 day free trial if you go for that option. So I really do recommend if you enjoyed this practice, there are so many practices like this, powerful, energizing, but full of feeling, uh, leaving our members feeling empowered and liberated and just, yeah, full of, full of all that good stuff. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to me ramble and so much for practicing with me. And I will see you again on the mat, hopefully on the Soul Sanctuary mat very, very soon. Bye-bye.